In this lecture, we are going to discuss more on grammars. In the last lecture, we have already seen what is a grammar. A grammar is defined as quadruple g equal to v to ps, where v is variables, t is terminal symbols, p is production rule, and s is the start symbol. Now, language generated by a grammar g, they can be defined as lg, g for grammar, l for language, so it becomes language generated by grammar g equal to W belongs to T star. Okay. Naturally, all strings they are made from terminal symbols. Such that S derives W in zero or more steps. Okay. This thing can be written as S here S is our start symbol. We apply the production rule one time any production rule in any order can be applied so what we get in general w1 now again a production rule is applied to w1 what we get w2 again we apply a production rule to w2 what we get w3 and so on up to wn finally all the variables present in wn it is replaced by either terminal symbols or null and then what we get a string w okay so up to wn it is sentential form it means at least one variable is present up to wn w is strings means all the variables they are replaced by either null or any terminal symbol so w cannot go further so finally what we uh, what we say w is w is a string or a sentence okay we take an example and we see what it means actually so we are taking example suppose g equal to this is our v variable capital s terminal symbols they are a and b p is our production rule and s is our start sum and our production rules they are suppose p s can be a s b and s can be a there are two production rules suppose we number them one and two now we try to derive a string from this production rule these production rules so we start from capital symbol s it is our start symbol we apply the very first production rule that is production rule number one what we get a s b see this is not a string it's a sentence form why it got a variable capital s now we can apply the production rule s can be a to this one so it becomes a a b now it's a string and they are sentence form and it's a string w Okay, similarly, we can see from the start, uh, from start symbol as we apply production rule number one, what we get ASB. Again, we apply the production rule number one, what we get A, A, S, B, and B. Suppose again we apply the production rule number one, then what we get? A, 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 S, B, B, B. Now we apply the production rule number two. What we get? This S is replaced by A. So what we get? A, 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 B, B, B. Okay, this S is replaced to A by using this production rule, rule number two. So this is our string. And up to this point, it is sentencial form. Okay, so this is the difference between sentencial form and a sentence or a string. Now, what is the language generated by this term LG? Can we give a general form to the language or strings generated by this grammar? So, we can notice one thing. When we apply the production rule number one, we get equal number of A's and B's. A comes first, then B's. Finally, 
the entire sequence can be ended by applying the rule number 2 so what what is rule number 2 this can be a so finally this a is replaced to 1a so when we apply production rule number 1 it got equal number of a's and b's and where we are ending by applying the rule number 2 so it will generate 1a extra so we can write the general form of this as a to the power n plus 1 b to the power n such that n greater than or equal to 0 it means all the strings which are produced by this grammar will have one more a's than number of b's okay you can derive one or more strings and we can uh, and you can see you can notice the pattern okay here we are getting one extra a's than b's here also we are getting one extra a's than b's and similarly whatever the production rules whatever uh, the pattern or whatever the sequence of production rule you apply finally what we get is a to the power n plus 1 b to the power n okay now we see what is leftmost and rightmost derivation of a string so if in each step the leftmost variable in the sentential form is replaced it is our leftmost derivation similarly if in each step the rightmost variable in the sentential form is replaced it is our rightmost derivation for example suppose summation is a and b and it is our production rules this can be capital A capital B capital A derives a capital AB or null capital B derives B capital B A or null so all the symbols which are in capital letter they are variables or non terminals and all the symbols which are in small case letter including this lambda null it is our terminal symbols we know that it is our convention capital letters they denote variables A small case letter they denote terminal symbols okay so we see using this these production rules what is string we can derive and we apply the production rules in such a way so we can differentiate what is left mode derivation and what is right mode derivation now suppose we apply the very first production rule this can be a b now in this which one is left most a. So we apply the production rule to this A starting from this A. So which rule is applicable? It can be either A, A, B or not. Suppose we are applying this one A, A, B. So it becomes A, A, B, capital B. Now in this sentencial form, which one is leftmost? Again A. So we apply suppose we apply the production rule a can be null so what we get a null b and b and we know that the condition of null with any symbol is with any string is the string itself so we write it a b and b okay now here the only variable which is uh, which present is capital b so we can take it either as leftmost or rightmost so because we are using leftmost derivation we can consider this b as leftmost and again we apply the production rule starting from b so a b b can be um, b b a okay again we apply the production rules to this leftmost symbol so it becomes a b b we are using the production rule b can be null so it becomes a so this is our 
final strand. So at each step, we replace the leftmost non-terminal symbol or variable by suitable production rules. So it is our leftmost derivation for A, B, B, A. Similarly, starting from the start symbol S, the very first production will apply is A, B. Now, we here, B is our rightmost symbol. So, we apply the production rule B, B, A. So, we are replacing the rightmost symbol by some production rule. So, it is our rightmost derivation. Again, we apply the production rule A, B, B can be none to this one. So, it becomes B, A. So again the rightmost variable is replaced by some symbol. Now in this case A is our A is the only symbol present here. So we can take it either left or right. So because we are using this time rightmost derivation we consider A as rightmost and this A can be replaced by using the production rule suppose A A B so it becomes A a B and this B A B A. Now we apply the production rules. Production rule A can be null, so it becomes A B B A. So the same string is derived. But what is the difference between them? In this case, the first one we replace the leftmost variable symbol by some production rules always so it is our leftmost derivation in this case we replace the rightmost symbol by suitable production rules at every step so what we get the rightmost derivation so this is the process for deriving leftmost and rightmost derivation and we can see later when we define what is an ambiguous grammar ambiguous grammar means for a particular string there can be more than one leftmost or rightmost derivation is possible then our grammar becomes ambiguous but before that we see what is a derivation tree or parse tree then we go to ambiguous grammar okay thanks for watching this video thank you